baby's home Cairo Cairo is my baby's home One bad Cairo night won't be long Carol, they will treat you kind and sweet. Women in Carol, they will treat you kind and sweet. Catch you around and take you off your feet. knock you, peach you, and cut you too. Shoot you and knock you, peach you, and cut you too. They get through the graveyard, then for you. Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to this first mutual YouTube and Facebook live stream. I don't have a clue how this is going to work on Facebook, but uh, my usual YouTube audience is here. So hello, everybody. Hello, Gayer. Great to see you. Happy New Year. Yes, exactly. We need music for that. Patrick, great to see you here as well. David, we had a blast uh, a couple of days ago. I was guesting uh, storm. Uh, it was a storm of a you know guesting uh, David Hunt's uh, live stream, and we even played something together. It sounded quite okay when you think about the latency and everything. You, you still cannot play over internet. This. Um, so everything is in sync so yeah but we did a good job resophonic brother that's right i'm going to be playing uh the resophonic guitar for the welcome song uh, a bit different version of a song that's get something to say to 2023 that's coming j albert great to see you here as well which means you have plenty of time to play guitar. That's going to be great. All right, folks, uh, let's start off with, uh, with a welcome song. Today is going to be a tech day. I'll, okay, I'll try to be brief when it comes to tech stuff. Uh, we'll see. But uh, we'll do some playing as well. Cool. All right. Mm. 
All right, tick, tick, tick. Let's move to the... Today, we're gonna have uh, some stuff in open D. The first song, the welcome song is gonna be in open D. And one of, the, one of the blues backups, live blues backups, is going to be an open D. So take a note if you want, if you haven't recorded, if you haven't uh, tuned the guitar into open D before, and if you don't know the basic stuff, then you're more than welcome to go to my YouTube channel and check the introductory video about that. And uh, on the announcement uh, post, both on Facebook and on YouTube in the description, there is a link to that video, so you don't have to search for it. You're going to find it very easily. So let's see now. And there it is in one of the little cutouts, you're seeing the, the pedal board we're going to be talking about a little bit. and. Uh, but now we'll start off with a song. So the welcome song for everybody and for the 2023, I'm welcoming you and I tell you one thing, I'm ready. I am ready, ready as anybody can be. I am ready, I'm ready as anybody can be. Stone bullets, wearing balls and chain. I'm drinking tea and tea. I'm smoking dynamite. I hope some screwball start a fly. Cause I'm ready. I'm ready as anybody can be. Of, of songs uh, that are maybe copyrighted or something. I've heard that some of the live streams, on, especially on Facebook, were put down because you're playing a song that's, uh, that somebody has protected. And I even have some, some copyright claims on my YouTube videos when I was just uh, playing a intro song from 1928 that I just didn't think was anything to be worried about. But I got a copyright straight. All right. So for those of you who are new, who are maybe watching us from Facebook, and since this is the first time, I've been live streaming since 24th of January, 2022. And I've used that time to, to learn about how to do these things and how to live stream, how to use various softwares and uh, you know, the technical stuff, how to make this uh, look good, sound good and everything. So it took me a couple of weeks, of course, and uh, I guess a couple of months. 
and this whole 2022 has been a kind of preparation year for me to start uh, uh, investing more of my time and sharing more of my, um, should I call it knowledge, experience about playing guitar and especially slide guitar because I, I think slide guitar should be a human right. Everybody could play a little bit of slide guitar because it's so resemblant of a human voice and uh, if I can play it, you can play it. Oh, that phrase, I stole that from Everyday Dad, a guy on YouTube who is a tech reviewer and he says, if I can make it, you can make it or if I can do it, you can do it. So same goes with the uh, guitar playing and I, 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 I'm I still claiming that uh, on any stage of your musical journey you are uh, able to improve some stuff and maybe within a week or two of maybe playing more often than usual uh, you can learn some new stuff and uh, get inspired by things like this live stream whatever so um, slide guitar very briefly you need this thing on your finger either made out of metal or of glass. These two are made by two true wizards of the craft. The glass one is made by Diamond Bottlenecks from the UK, Ian McQuee and his glass blowers artists who are fantastic. And then we got a father and son company called Daddy Slide from Germany. And they made this slide out of German brass for especially for my barit baritone guitar but uh, I use it on this resophonic as well so it's, it's the same thing why metal why glass so if I would play a melody on the slide guitar on the first maybe two strings and I would get this uh, this style of playing <laughs> This note was clean, nice, oily because it's a glass uh, played on and pressed on the metal. If I use the metal slide and do the same thing, I believe you've noticed that the volume was a bit higher. It was more punch to the tone, but you also heard a little bit more of the string and the slide contact here. So if I don't pick that note, this sound of slide gliding to the string is more prominent than when playing with slide, with the glass slide. At the same time, if you play chords in uh, open D tuning so to say that we're here and you get this now if I play the same thing with the glass slide the notes a little bit less than the metal slide still the metal is punchier more prominent and more in your face sound but it's always depending on the song uh, some songs I will definitely play the glass slide and some songs I'll play the, the metal one so let's say by Sam Mitchell called uh, Packing Pallets. If I do the same thing with a, metal, with a glass slide, it sounds like this. It's a different punch to it, of course. 
All right, so uh, let me see if there are any comments here. <laughs> yeah, G. Albert. Uh, I'm having lots of fun. It's it's always like that, and uh, this can be compared to to live gig when you when you um, when you where, where you don't have the audience that you can see, but you can feel them, and it's enough that one person is on the other side of the camera, on the other side on internet. It feels like I'm in a club, and uh, you get this stage fright directly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After more than 40 years of uh, playing live, you still get it. All right. Hi, Tunde. Yeah, that would be great. I used to play in, in Stompin' a lot, and I played at Fashing. It's a great uh, jazz club, in, in jazz and blues club in, in Stockholm. Stompin' doesn't have uh, that kind of blues uh, gigs anymore but uh, there is a place called Engelen and every Saturday afternoon my good buddy Brian Kramer is hosting a blues jam so uh, I've been a guest on these blues jams a couple of times and we had some special events in Stockholm as well so if I ever come back uh, I'll let you know definitely yeah I am having fun with this so um for the newcomers, I'd also like to show you how the, this other open tuning sounds. This was the open D, right? Now, I'll show you the open G. I'm still here. Of course I am. All right, so. All right, how can we do this? This guitar is very small and uh, I'm gonna do it this way. Today's live stream is going to be a bit more improvised than usually. And uh, during the whole 2022, we had live streams with uh, special themes, with the uh, artists in focus. I, I spoke about old blues masters from the 20s and 30s that have uh, influenced me. I uh, analyzed songs, tunings, uh, grooves, and uh, different uh, blues styles. We define this uh, expression of what's Americana. Uh, so it's like kind of difficult to compress all that into explanation like this. But uh, let's do this first live stream in 2023 and welcome the new year. And then we'll go into much more structure next year. Uh, and of course, we're going to have some guests. It's a different beast when it comes to notes that are included there. You can see the open G from the basses to your left and down to the treble strings. We start from the basses. So the first string goes down to D from E. Second string goes from A down to G. The fourth, third and the second string are the same as in standard tuning. And then the first string goes down to D. That's when you get this. Uh, chord. Right. And there are, of course, some grips and chord shapes and licks that you can play in open G. One of the most famous songs in blues when it comes to uh, open G could be, let's say, Walking Blues with uh, Muddy Waters, that even Eric Clapton made very, very popular in his own version when he played that in 1992. I will put this bottle feel around, around my 
my shoe Lord, I must have heard them This old walking blue Of this morning Feel around, around for my shoe What? Lord, I must have heard them This old walking blue Some people tell me they're worried. Oh, blues ain't bad. It's the worst old feeling I'm old. I must have heard. Some people tell me. So that would be a, a typical song played in, in, in open G. Albert. Can you use your open D to open G transpose button like, like that? <laughs> no, no, it's impossible. But uh, David Hunt, who plays piano, for, for those of you who don't know, David is an amazing piano player and, and a singer. Uh, he plays all kinds of music, but he's very, very deeply rooted in, in gospel, spiritual music, and of course, old timey blues and jazz. And uh, yeah, uh, these more advanced keyboards uh, or digital pianos have this opportunity to transpose and you play the same kind of keys on your keyboard, but uh, the keys of a song can change digitally, right? But on the guitar, sorry, Albert, I just can't do that. Uh, but my advantage is that I have several guitars. So the metal, metal guitar, the resophonic guitar is in open D. This little sanding guitar, let me show you. Um, this is how it looks. Right. It's a small, uh, small body resophonic guitar and an acoustic at the same time. So it's got the resonator up here, which is a kind of, I think this is a, nine inch or something maybe a bit smaller uh, resophonic uh, guitar is a resonator here below the strings underneath the strings and that gives it this resophonic sound but only when you play it like uh, down here close to the saddle to the to the bridge sorry yeah right as soon as you come a little bit closer to the sound hole and uh, play a little bit softer, you get this acoustic touch to it. Of course, there's a touch of resophonic sound as well, but it's it's a fantastic little guitar where you can really get some punchier sounds like. attack the microphone. Oh, Bob Brosman, uh, American uh, guitar player, who is unfortunately not with us anymore, he was a master of working with a microphone. So he could just direct his instrument towards uh, a microphone when he was playing live and just create some fantastic sounds from one single guitar. Yeah, he was amazing. And then, of course, in the arsenal, there's this, uh, my, main guitar which is uh, going to be used now when i'm going to be playing the live blues backup for you guys so let's go to that okay. 
So, hmm. this is my main guitar for the newcomers. Also, a micro sanden guitar. If we pronounce it in Swedish, it's Mikael Sanden, Sanden guitars. And uh, this guitar is in none of these tunings. It's in a standard tuning. Standard, standard, nothing special. But it's a wonderful instrument, and I'm going to be playing uh, the blues back up. It's going to be a slow blues in E. So grab, grab your guitars and let's go. I usually do this like three, four minutes of continuous backup. I don't sing, I don't play a solo really. I just give the backup for you guys. You can, you can sit at home and just practice to it. Maybe play a solo, maybe sing a verse of a song you, you know that is a kind of blues or bluesy and uh, it's kind of for something that keeps us accountable. Every Monday evening, nine o'clock, you know, I'll be giving you a backup for one slow blues in E, and the other song is always like improvised. And today I decided to do it in open D, so I'll be changing the guitars. So if you have another guitar that is open D, great. If you can tune fast between open D and uh, standard tuning, that's great. But uh, that's gonna be like in five, six minutes. So let's go. Uh, Blues back up in. I just switched the camera a little bit, the angle of the other one, so you can see my fingers. That's right. So let's go. Two, three, four. Thank you. 
that was a standard tuning, slow blues in E. I was trying not to be in your way, and uh, I was going a little bit up and down the neck, of course, uh, because you cannot just only play uh, the basses and just the chords of the backup. You don't even, you don't do that even if you're playing with somebody else. It's it's always this interaction of maybe attacking another frequency, maybe ending up on, on another part of the fretboard here. So uh, in this case, I've played some of the A chords like this, and then so this. This is actually a part of a bare chord, the A chord here on the fifth fret, right? But I, since I have the bass on the fifth string, which is A, so I can leave that open, and it rings better than when you fret it. So it's a, it's more life to it. And then you just use the part of this chord on the first three strings, but then I add this note of B on the seventh fret, and that gives it this nice A9 chord. But everything is within this shuffle pattern. And um, I will definitely be, be doing some videos which are going very, very neatly into details of how to play these shuffles so that they're dynamic, uh, lively, and that they're, they have some nice life to it. Because if you just play it like uh, as it's maybe written in some tablature that says, okay, play twice on the second fret and twice on the fourth fret, and that's your blues shuffle in E. And let's demonstrate that. Right, you can play this with a plectrum. It doesn't make any, any difference if you're doing or like this. There is no music in this, but when you uh, learn how to dam be, be, behind uh, the the or on top of the saddle up here, and you can dampen these bass strings into a little bit uh, of a hidden bass. And then you go with the rest of it. That's a whole nother story. And then of course, in between every of these, I dampen all the strings. So you get this toop, 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 toop. And when you play it slowly like this, it's maybe not that lively and maybe doesn't sound so so fantastic. But when you just speed up, speed up all this into a real Chicago shuffle, let's say that you get this. And then go back to the basics. And I also dampen with my fretting hand here and with my picking hand. So it's a conjunction of different kinds of dampening techniques when it comes to this blues shuffle. So let's uh, move on to the second uh, blues backup, which is gonna be an open D. why don't you just let me know in the chat how was your Christmas and New Year's Eve still recovering or did it go smoothly as most of the people of my age are doing it nowadays I had my wild New Year's Eve's playing uh, blues gigs and welcoming the new year with loads of Old timey blues with my harmonica player Pedro Joe, and uh, yeah, that was fun. So let's say if any of you still has the standard tuned guitar in your hands, and you 
just play the E chord and I play this chord here. This corresponds a uh, standard tuned guitar playing E chord. So this is, this is an open D, so the open strings are in open D. But on the second fret, we have the E chord. So if I would put the capo on the second fret and you would keep on playing an E, which isn't such a bad idea at all. So if I do that, hmm, okay, give me a second. I'll show you that in a second. I have presented this fantastic capo called G7th from the UK. It's, uh, well, I think it's the best in the world, but somebody would say one of the best capos in the world because I don't have to retune or fine tune anything when I'm putting this capo on the guitar because it just stays where it should be. Amazing good capo. So, if you still have your guitar uh, in your hands, standard tuned, you can keep on playing an E and improvising on top of this, what I'm going to be playing now, which is not going to be a blues shuffle. This is going to be a, a kind of a, if you imagine uh, Jesus on the main line, old gospel song, or if, if you um, play uh, Crazy About an Automobile by Wright Cooter, it's, it's this same tune. <laughs>
So that was my uh, kind of favorite improvisation when it comes to uh, open D when I play with somebody else, especially if, if that person is also playing slide guitar. This is a very uh, inviting and rewarding groove because there, there's a lot of space and, and uh, things are happening all the time. You can syncopate, you can change the rhythms, but still it's like a do, 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 do. And let me tell you one thing, drummers love this as well. So, oh, I see some good old friends coming up. I think I, I should have, I believe I, 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 believe I should have uh, live streamed to Facebook earlier as well. But um, yeah, hello, Helcon, an old friend, a great music lover and a music, um, He's a music guy. He knows a lot about music. Yes, G7 capo, it's amazing. Uh, there's when it comes to to playing with a capo. So, let's compare it. I'm playing in front of a very good condenser microphone, which means it's a it's a studio microphone. It's of good quality, and it really when we think internet audio compression, it's coming over YouTube, uh, Facebook, that are compressing in their own way, but still it's a quite good uh, audio quality. But there is a difference in, in, in the guitar tone when, as soon as you fret it with, with a capo. If I put it on the second fret, if you listen to this bass, now I'll remove the capo, and now we go to and it's not only because this is deeper because we went from E to D. It's as soon as you put something, as you fret uh, the fretboard, you're cutting off a bit of this uh, volume of the guitar. But that goes only for the guitars that have a bone or a plastic nut up here. Because w when you play this first bass note, this is a metal string, but it's resting on the wooden, no, the, uh, yes, it's on a wooden uh, Ebenholtz, ebony uh, bridge here, and then there is a bone nut up here. It's a different dynamics than if you play it with, a, let's say, the zero fret guitars. Now we're coming into this nerdy stuff. Uh, most of the people who are going to be watching this are not maybe musicians and don't know the difference between, okay, what's zero fret, why? So if I just show you, uh, Michael Sandon guitars are always made with a zero fret here, which means the strings are resting on the first metal fret here. And that's what gives them this even volume on all fretboard even if you put the capo on it. So there is a difference. There, there are situations where you really want to use a capo. Sometimes when the song is too deep for you to sing, maybe you want to keep the chords that you're used to play and then just raise the, with a capo, you raise the whole key of the song and the pitch is better for your singing voice or somebody else's voice. I used to accompany a lot of singers and people who just said, oh, could you please play this in another tuning? This is very high or low for me. So, hmm, it depends. All right, uh, we'll have to go to the theme for today, which is uh, actually, welcome 2023, and uh, things have changed. I have uh, updated my my pedal board uh, for, for the coming period. When I made my old pedal board three years ago, I thought this is it. This is the ultimate. And what is a pedal board? Actually, it's a it's a plate made out of wood, metal, or whatever they can be as you know as as advanced as they can be. But basically, if you want to have a good live sound, and it doesn't matter if if you're a professional musician uh, earning money going out 
playing festivals, big clubs, whatever, or you're playing uh, on a friend's party or your own party. Uh, it, it doesn't matter of which stage of the musical journey you're, you're, you're on at. It's if you want to have a good amplified sound and not sound like, I don't know, if I would stand from here, but my voice would be this uh, strong. That's usually what you get when you play on these, in these usual live venues where, where if, if you want to amplify a guitar with a, just a microphone and not a pickup and all that. So I'll have a live stream that's going to be dedicated to only how to amplify uh, an acoustic instrument. And thank God, nowadays we can really do it. When I started off in, in the mid 80s to, to perform, uh, on yeah, festival clubs, um, we had quite lousy equipment and first of all we didn't have the money to buy good stuff and then Ovation guitars that had these uh, built-in pickups were very expensive so I, I had to find different solutions and I've tried everything electric guitar pickups in, in the guitars and everything so I'm still using electric guitar pickup in this acoustic Right, so this is a rasophonic guitar, uh, and it sounds this way when it's rasophonic, right? So I'll change, and I will show you the the pedal board that I'm talking about. So actually, this is just a metal plate where I have this little white uh, piece of hardware is. Uh, is a multi effect processor that down there right and then we have this volume pedal and we have some separate individual different kinds of pedals that do different things to the sound i'll be demonstrating very briefly uh this thing and uh the reason why i did the change why i uh, made this switch from one pedal board to the next one was before because uh, i had this um situation while i was playing live that i couldn't really change anything on the fly in between songs uh the old pedal board was only maybe i have a no oh, there it is uh the old pedal board is here and uh, i loved the thing and I still love this uh, little black unit down here which uh, made it possible so that I have all these external pedals on but with these buttons here I could switch to different combinations of those pedals and I cannot do this on on the new pedal board but the new pedal board that I have now uh, is going to make it possible to, to both make these changes on the fly and I can you know, uh, both prepare some of the presets that I can have, you know, already pre-made sounds for special songs that I can switch in between. And I can also activate these pedals manually and uh, include them in, in, in the whole thing, right? So, um, yeah, that's right. So I've showed you that. And uh, this is the pedal board in real life. And... Uh, so let's see if I can engage and let's see if we can change the microphones. Now I have disengaged the, the regular microphone that I have in front of me. Now it's only the pedal board and the guitar plugged into that. So if I would engage the reverb, which gives us a little bit spacious sound, it should sound like this. That's so each one of these buttons is providing me with different effects. Let's say if I would uh, want to change this, this is a so-called tremolo effect.
let's disengage that. This will be, let's say, A factor of a vintage echo. Too much of it, I know. This is not the finished setup on this pedal board. I'm just starting to work with it. So I just wanted to show you. And then the main thing is that with just one of the places here on number one, first from the left on the white unit, I can include any of these pedals that you see above. So if I want to uh, use an octave pedal, it would sound like this. So you get an extra bass guitar if you want, if there are situations where you, where you might need it. So uh, that's what this pedal can do. Then also I can include this little drive pedal up there to the right. This is more prominent if I play some slide. this live like this but just for as a little example of how it could be done right and uh, hmm, should I surprise you with that or should I not if I press this little button here uh, that's also some that I can something that I can include in the in the live situation let's say if I play something like this <laughs> like this and you can't see me but uh, you can't see me you cannot see me like this either because I have that camera on that uh, pedal board but um, let's let's do it this way if I engage that pedal and play my guitar you're gonna be surprised ready to that and you get this um, actually nothing to show off with it's it's not a question of that it, it's more that uh, now I have these possibilities of, of experimenting because I want to learn how uh, let's say people who play synthesizers, who, people who play, let's say, who compose music for motion pictures, uh, who use just a keyboard, and then all of a sudden you hear the whole orchestra emulated by, by them playing just those keys on a digital piano or a keyboard or a MIDI controller, which means that they need to start thinking as somebody who would play that instrument, maybe a, a horn, maybe a bass guitar, maybe a, uh, I don't know, clarinet or some other uh, instrument. So it's for me, this is like, okay, cool. I can have this little 
organ emulator of different kinds because here I have many, many different sounds that I can experiment with. And then you can maybe record a backup with that and then play some slide on top of it. So hmm, I might do that in, in some of the upcoming live streams, like uh, throw myself over the limb and um, let's experiment, see what comes out of it. Maybe I'll do it. Right. Oh yeah, I'm getting accused uh, for this uh, gas, gear acquisition syndrome. Uh, I've been like that all my life. I, I love buying things, but uh, at the same time, I don't buy so much stuff compared to many of my colleagues. So uh, don't judge me too hard. I really try to buy things that will be justified uh, either by, you know, earning as much money as I've spent buying it or even more or that I really feel that they contributed to a development of some kind. Maybe I'll get more creative with some, some technical stuff and maybe, yeah, I don't know. If you'd ask me, what would you take on a desert island if that's going to be your last thing? What would you do? Which guitar would you take with you? Which amplifier? Which what what stuff that you have nothing of that i will take my favorite acoustic guitar which is the sandon i showed you before and no effects nothing i just play it acoustically because that's what drove me into playing acoustic guitar from the beginning and uh, that's the most important thing everything else is kind of nice experimentation and i like doing it and it's it's really cool especially when you, when i play live and uh, you get this interaction with people and uh, yeah that's cool Yeah, exactly. Uh, impressive. Well, Les Paul had been jealous. Yes, Les Paul is one of the pioneers of uh, using a technology uh, of that time in the late 40s, early 50s, and uh, his use of you know Echoplex machines and and uh, the way he uh, experimented. He, he he was amazing. I I can just dream about what he could have accomplished if he lived today. That would be amazing. Yeah, but it's still the stuff he he's who he he was doing is just as fresh and innovative as it was when it came in in at his when he was in his prime when he was in his thirties or something and made all that. So guys, look for uh, Les Paul and Mary Ford, right? And uh, there there there's lots of stuff on YouTube. So you can see um, how he used that with his electric guitar. Oh, that was amazing. Oh, I see another good friend visiting the live stream. Happy New Year. Vuja, my friend from Novi Sad in Serbia. Great to see you here. All right. So guys, uh, it's been an hour now. Out of respect for your time. And it's it's been such a great hour uh, to spend with you guys. But... I'll be back next Monday. You're more than welcome. And uh, let's see. Uh, I can do one more little thing before we part. I could show you um, this guitar. Let me just turn on the microphone as well. We're coming back to the acoustic sound. The microphone is coming closer to me. Sorry for the... Baritone guitar, also made uh, by Mikael Sandén. And the reason I got this metal slide was because of this guitar. So I'll be showing this off uh, quite often in the coming live streams and in my YouTube videos. There's actually a song on my YouTube channel called The Notion Song. It's, it's a funny little ditty that I just actually took hesitation blues, an old blues standard 
and I just change the lyrics into something that's related to the software that I'm using. And, uh, but that's where you could hear this guitar uh, sounding really, really nice with these microphones uh, recorded here at home. Nothing special. Robert Johnson, right there. I got red man. I got red man all on my mind. But she treats me so Baritone guitar by Michael Sandon. Why baritone? Uh, because they have wonderful deep sound. They're bigger than regular guitars. They're with longer necks and everything. But I will be, I'll be talking about that as well in the upcoming live stream sessions. So every Monday, ladies and gentlemen, um, let's just uh, uh, finish it off now because now I'm way past the hour. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming, both you from YouTube and you guys on Facebook. It's been fun. And obviously it works well. You know, tech-wise, everything, nobody was complaining there was any tech issues. No, nope. fine. I don't see anything in the comments anyway. Like the video, please, and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be, com I'll be coming with, with uh, lots of content uh, during the 2023. It's going to be fun. I want to share everything I've learned. It's not going to cost you a penny. Just that's it. So, guys, uh, thanks so much for coming, and I will see you next week. All right. Whew. I dropped my slide on the floor, on the carpet. Whew. Thank God. It was a glass one. All right. Don't break it. And remember, if I can play it, you can play it. See you next week. And was in spring. One sunny day, my sweetheart left me. Now she went away. Now she's gone, and I don't worry. But I'm sitting on top of the world. And she called me up, down and out by soul. She said, Come back, daddy. But I need you so Now she's gone And I don't worry Cause I'm sitting on top of the world
beaches Don't you shake my tree Get out of my ocean Let my beaches be Now she's gone Now don't worry But I'm sitting on top of the world Sitting on top 